You know, that old saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And uh, today's the last day in the labyrinth line. And I'm kind of sad about that because all of the soaps that The Soap Prentice has made for her Labyrinth series have been so much fun to watch and it's been so much fun to talk about the Labyrinth and do all the things with you guys in the comments. And this is the last bar. But I did save the best for last and I will tell you what that best for last is in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 24 of 365 days of soap, year two. And yeah, the Soap Prentice is finishing up the Labyrinth line that she's been working on. And as I said, I saved the best for last. She made them all like in the same day, and I got to decide where they all went in the, you know, the lineup. And this one was my favorite. And it's my favorite because of the very first thing that I showed you the very first day of the Labyrinth series, which I'm going to show you again. As I said before, when we first started the series, uh, the Soprint has made this. This is one of her handcrafted items, all handcrafted. She doesn't have a mold or a cast or anything for it. She does it all by hand, the adorable eyes, and she puts the hair in and all of the things. It's amazing and available on her Etsy, so go check that out. But she also did a soap version of the Ella Worm, and I love him. He's my favorite little guy. When she's like wandering through the, the labyrinth, and he's like, don't go that way, never go that way. And then it turns out he could have helped her get right to the castle, but he was trying to... Yes, and so we're doing this one last, and I'm super excited for it. We should actually get to this pour, and we will talk more about the Sierra Candles blend that the Soap Prentice selected for this, as well as the uh, technique that she decided to retry, which is a revisit from one of the Amy Warden Soap Challenge challenges. So, you know, let's go check that out now, and we'll chit-chat in the video. Okay, so today we are saving the best for last. This is the last in the Labyrinth line. Eight bars, all of them extraordinary, and this is the best one. And this is the best one for me for a number of reasons, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But, you know, first things first, I'm the realist. Drop this and let... No, 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 no. That's not what we're doing today. We're talking about soap. And uh, so, yes, first things first, the scent, Sierra Candles. The Soap Prentice selected for the Ello Bar, the worm, cutest guy ever, Rainforest Sugar Cane, which is a Bath and Body Works dupe. Now, I don't know why she selected this for this soap. I'm so, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm so sorry if that's like a very obvious reference to that I'm not getting. But also she could have just selected this because she liked how it sounded. Because I do that a lot. I actually just ordered 20 cents for an upcoming, uh, for, for an upcoming series that we're going to do. And a lot of them were just because I liked the way they sounded. And I will figure out 
what scent belongs to what character, you know, at that point. But let's talk about the soaping notes and all of the descriptions on Sierra Candle's website. The scent description is you experience an Hawaiian rainforest with an intriguing mixture of dewy citrus, lush greens, and musky nuances. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Vanillin content that was left blank. Uh, soaping notes, it says it soaps perfectly. No acceleration in ricing, slight yellow c color after cure, strong scent retention. Okay, cool. Love that. So I'm glad that she paid attention to the soaping notes for this and selected this, a, a scent that does not accelerate or rice for the pour that she's doing because the pour that she is tackling on this is actually one of the reasons why I think this is the best one that I have saved for last in the Labyrinth line. Because the pour, the Soprentice, the first time she did it, did not like it, did not trust herself or the process. Okay, so look at that. She's got some dividers. So uh, back when we were doing the Amy Warden Soap Challenge Challenge thing, we did to comb or not to comb. And the Soap Prentice sort of did, well, not sort of, she did not like this pour. She was not convinced that it was done, that she did it right, that there were going to be any, you know, combing, whatever. And so she went through the whole process and then decided to comb anyway. And for this, for the Ello worm, she decided to try it again. And so again, I'm very glad that she chose a scent that does not accelerate because you need a very fluid batter for the, for this pour, for the, the comb pour, or the not to comb, really, pour. Now, for those of you that have never seen that and did not see the whatever, A, I'm wondering why she didn't use the dividers that I made for the that I made out of my political signs because those things stay in there super tight and there's no seepage between the I'll, I'll have to remind her that they still exist because they're super reusable but anyway to the actual point for a not to comb pour so with this pour you are alternating in these three areas the colors that you're putting in so you would not just take a wall pour at the length of the mold and do like the same color gray in each of the cavities and then layer it over with the next color in all three of the cavities because then the variation and like the comb effect doesn't really show up so it's it I, I believe it was suggested in the tutorial back when we did the Amy Warden soap challenge thing that like Cavity one and three would be the dark gray, and then you would go ahead and go over it with, you know, one, two, three, with the light gray, all three cavities, and then the next one, the mid gray would be just the middle. Like, always change up the variation and where you put your colors. Don't just put the same color in each cavity every time that you, you know, don't go one, two, three across the whatever. Yeah. And usually with a comb pour I mean not usually with a comb pour a comb pour because I guess it can be done any kind of way there's no real there are no real hard or fast rules to almost anything in soap making like the only real hard and fast rule is don't mess up your lie like that's it that's all but we don't mess up our lie around here so then we go on to the other things and techniques are techniques and it's cool and you can get some inspiration and some guidance but also feel free to you know mix it up as you need to within the pour but usually with a not to comb pour I believe the far end of the mold is propped up 
No, the close end of the mold is propped up. The far end of the mold is propped up on a clam shell. I don't know. I've put info cards on the screens of when we did this and I explained it, you know, proper like. You guys can go and uh, check those ones out for sure. But when the Soprentice first did this, she didn't like it. And then I started cutting it and she's like, oh yeah, no, I do. I like this a lot. And so, you know, she trusted herself and she ended up, I mean, she trusts herself now enough to, you know, try the pour again and trust the process, which is awesome. Now I'm going to assume that the colors that she chose and the design that she chose really is to look to mimic the side of the labyrinth wall, right? Because Sarah first comes in contact with Ello, with the worm, when uh, she's in the labyrinth. And there's this adorable blue worm with a shock of red hair and like a cute, I think he had a scarf on or something, whatever. And she starts walking, you know, past him and she hears this little teeny voice that's like, no, no, never go that way. And she's like, wait, what? And he's like, never go that way. And she's like, oh, thanks, you know, whatever. And goes the other way. And then it pans to this little adorable worm saying, if she had kept going straight that way, she'd gone, she would have gone straight to the castle, which was her literal task. But also it's interesting because he created some conflict within the story that ultimately was needed because on a hero's journey, you know, if there's no conflict, there's no real story. Are, are you really heroic? Are you learning anything about yourself? Is it, does any of this matter really? And so, you know, he was a cute little side addition, unlike yesterday's bar. I, I don't think they were cute side additions at all. They were scary side additions, but a little worm, that's cute. Now, the second reason why I saved this one for the last and why I think that I saved the best for last is because the Soap Prentice started her Etsy page. I don't, she has some other like things on her, on her Etsy page now. Like she will do like a custom portrait for your dog and stuff and like flowers or whatever, like she'll do. And also like, seriously, if you guys are interested in that, you should jump on that because her prices are so stupidly cheap for the professionalism that goes into her products and portraits and all of the things and the time that she spends on them. Like she's underpriced. She's under, she's undercutting herself and she's not listening to me. Wait, I mean, fair point. Why would you listen to me when I don't take my own advice? Because all of my stuff is also underpriced, whatever. But yeah, she started her channel or her Etsy page rather. She needs to build a channel, but she started her Etsy page with these adorable little Ello worms that are about like, I don't know, four or five inches long, really heavy too. She molded them out all out of clay and I mean, everything is custom made, like, you know, when you order it. And so they're all completely handmade. She did not make a cast or a mold or anything for this. That she then paints and details and like puts the little hair in. And they're amazing. They're so cute. I showed them at the end of, or at the beginning of the first video for the Labyrinth series. And I will show it at the end of this one too, because it's adorable. And... I love it. Like I, I bought one immediately. Are you kidding me? And then her, like her attention to detail with like the packaging and like the experience when you open up the box, because she literally mailed it to my house. We see each other every day and she mailed it to my house. Like, and it was cute. Like she had put so much thought and care into it, which is, you know, what the Soprentice does with everything in her life. So I, I should, I shouldn't have been surprised by that, that she chose to ship my Ello worm instead of just giving it to me because she could have done, but you know, that, that's a nice attention to detail. It's great. 
those are things that the end user appreciates. Really. I mean, you don't realize that you appreciate it until you get it. And it's like, oh yeah, that's cool. But for me, I'm, you know, I can, I can go either way, but I really did appreciate that. Anyway, so those are the reasons why I, I left Ello for the last bar in this series. And now is time to pull the, the dividers. Now, everybody will always tell you, pull the dividers out in one fell swoop. Just, just pull them both out at the exact same time. Don't worry about the soap waste. But I don't know a soaper alive that actually doesn't worry about the soap waste. Like, you spent money on your oils. You spent money on your scents and your colors. You want to make sure that every single little teeny tiny bit of it is in the, the actual mold so your bars are not underweight. Like, and so, you know, find creative ways to get all of the soap back into the mold. And one of the things that we always do with the dividers is exactly this. Like as we're pulling them out, we're spatuling the, the sides down, just scraping it down. And there's always enough soap left in the actual containers to just make a pretty top right over that, which is what she's going to do. And then it doesn't matter that there's some weird spots on the top. I mean, in some pores... Yeah, pull them straight out, but those pores are very, very few and far between. And usually slab pores. There's always something that you can do to decorate the top of the mold, the top of the bars, to hide the mess that you created with pulling the the dividers out. And, you know, that's exactly what the soap is is doing right now. She put all the soap that was left over in those containers back into the mold and made a pretty little top. But she's not done. She's not done. You, you would think that she would be done with all of this. But this is the Soprentice. So I guess actually to that, if you thought that she was all done. Hi, maybe you're new to the channel and you don't, you don't know the Soprentice yet. She's never done. There's always that extra little little bit that brings everything together perfectly and this is what she's doing to bring it together perfectly now do you notice with those those scarves they're not just like you know like the ribbons for all of the awesome you know charity and everything that we do for you know like the pink ribbons for cancer all the things they're not just that she actually put little little she took a for she used soap dough for this by the way but she took like a skewer and made fringes on the ends of the scarf to make sure that it looked like a scarf and also this is a really smart way to put all of your top decorative pieces into a mold to ensure that you're going to get a good cut if one end is wider than the other and you're not going to be cutting through, you know, your, your, your top decoration. Putting them like that, it, that's, that's perfect. They're still all within the, the allotted space. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She did it. Oh, I don't know if she did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. She totally did. Why did I have to count that so many times? And onto the cut. Now this has been sea popped and gelled overnight. The, the top decoration is not at, in danger of like melting in a sea pop because it's made out of soap dough, which is, you know, cold process soap made to have the consistency of dough so you can mold it into cool things. I've done a couple videos on that. You can, I, I'll link it, I guess, but Maybe it's time for another soap dough. That's so cute. Oh, wow. That is great. Now, because she wanted to put the scarves on top, we don't get to show you the different ways that you can cut a comb or a not to comb technique as it is. 
but you can also cut this instead of cutting it into your normal one inch, you know, chunks, like something like this does, uh, sectioning it out and then cutting the bottom and the top and the middle, like cutting it horizontally instead of vertically, right? Wow. That one had a lot of, a lot of comey techniques. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Cool. That's very cool. And I'm trying to figure out what side of the mold. I think that was the far side that that was on. So she got more variation in the colors or in the, 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 the pour at that point than the other side. But they're all just super gorgeous. And that's perfect. Like the little labyrinth wall and the little Ella worm is popping out at the end. And I think that is the perfect end to all of the labyrinth soaps. And I'm so proud of the soap apprentice for tackling a theme all on her own. Well so done. First up, everything about that soap was completely perfect. I really loved the colors that she did. I love the scent that she selected. I love how fluid the batter stayed throughout that entire pour. So I mean, hats off to you, Sierra Candles. So far, so good. You guys have been absolutely extraordinary in all of the scent blends that we have used. So that's been great. Um, but I also really love that the soap apprentice took a pour that she had tried during the soap challenge thing and uh, tried to do it again and was great at it. So that's awesome. You know, definitely not all bars. If it fails the first time, try it again, learn from it. And you know, as the soap apprentice has pointed out, she will get her perfect in, you know, three tries or less. And she does it in two all of the time. And this one, she's still, she's still on track. So that's awesome. And uh, I love the little, the little scarf that she put on the top of all the bars. That was perfect. And just the perfect end to an absolutely great, extraordinary, and a lot of fun soap series. So if you are interested in the Ella Worm soap or any of the other Labyrinth soaps, you can find them today at soapandclay.com. They are all available as a set or individually. So head on over there, pick them up, show Georgia May some love, do the things, absolutely. If you're interested in seeing what other like theme things we tackle, subscribe to the channel. We don't do the themes every day. It's every two, it's whatever. We do back to basic stuff. We do recipe stuff. We do how to build a business testing stuff. And then the other four days a week, we like to go with our themes because we love themes. And so that's all a thing. We will be starting a new theme in a few days and it's mine. And I'm very excited for that one for sure. So I can't you know, tell you anything about that today because today's Labyrinth Day. So yes, for those of you who are subscribed, you're gonna get to know what that theme is. So that's awesome for you. And I hope you like it for sure. I hope you loved the Labyrinth line and had as much fun as I did with all of this. I do appreciate you guys coming back and like hanging out with me for another day as always. And um, I'm out of here, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun.